Addiction is rampant in our society. Today, there are the very serious social uh, concerning ones like drugs and alcohol um, and tobacco, things like that. Uh, there are these sort of more tongue-in-cheek ones like, I'm addicted to shopping on Amazon. Uh, there are the ones that some people consider fake and some people consider real, like a porn addiction or a sex addiction, which are mostly used so that conservative politicians can get away with shit. Um, <laughs> There's all these sorts of addictions. Now, I have drinks sometimes, and I like to smoke a cigarette sometimes, and I have put some drugs in my nose and mouth and face. Um, <laughs> sometimes, allegedly. Um, and I have shopped on Amazon Prime, and I have had a fair amount of sex, and I like a fair amount of porn. But these are not the things that I'm addicted to. Uh, I'm addicted to a very particular thing. It is the most euphoric, most amazing thing on the planet. And in fact, it's a sound. I am addicted to a sound. And that sound... <laughs> I am a performer. I am addicted to applause. Applause are the greatest things that could ever happen to you. You get all that recognition from all those people and you say, oh my God. <laughs> Anyway, right, now, every time you get a round of applause from an audience, no matter what size, that is my own little brush with fame. Every time that I get a round of applause, I am a celebrity to those 10, 50, 100, or as far as I counted, the biggest audience I ever performed for was about 1,252, all right, which is... Not that I counted or told the box office guy to give me the numbers after, but I totally did. Um, so every time you get a round of applause, you are a celebrity. You are having your own little brush with fame. If you do it at a local theater company, little kids come up to you and they want your autograph. Your parents come up to you and give you a gift, or if you're five, they take you to Dairy Queen or something after you're done. All right? And I've been performing for a long time, and so I have been receiving these highs. I have been addicted to this thing for a long time. Um, I started in school choirs. Um, and then I moved on to school plays. I came to college here in York, Pennsylvania, and I was part of the very first class to graduate from York College of Pennsylvania with a theater degree, which was really cool. All right, I, in college, I did 23 plays in college, and every time we'd do a five or six show run, and there'd be a couple hundred people every couple months that would see you and cheer for me, and I am shooting up every couple of weeks on these applause, and I'm loving it, and I take this high, and I run with it, and I moved to Philadelphia afterward. I move to Philadelphia and I get into the local theater scene. I start acting professionally. I am, in an, I am still technically in the swing cast for an off-Broadway play, which I have technically still been in the cast for for eight years. <laughs> All right? And sometimes they call me and I have to go to Cleveland and I have to do a show, or I have to go to Philadelphia and I have to do a show, or I have to go to New York and I have to do a show. After nine months in Philadelphia working professionally, I move to New York. I get picked up by an off-Broadway production company that wants to move me to New York going to pay for my first couple months to live there so that eight shows a week I can get fed my addiction. Eight shows a week I can stand there. And after every show, there might be an interview. There's going to be a press junket. I get to do interviews on the radio. Now, the show that I was doing was uh, very gay. Um, there was a... I was the straight man in a show full of drag queens, most of whom I had to make out with, and so most of our audience were very exuberant gay men who loved to take me out places, who loved to get autographs, who loved to have a great time. So every night I got treated to this New York life of being a goddamn celebrity. It's amazing. After that, I got a second off-Broadway show and a third off-Broadway show in a row, and I was really feeling it. And then, like all things, like all addictions, it starts to turn on you a little bit. I didn't get something the next summer. Things faltered. I was doing, playing smaller houses, doing smaller shows. Suddenly I'm auditioning for student films at NYU. Fuck those kids. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Things start, the audiences start to get smaller. The applause starts to die down a little bit. So much so that I, I eventually grew to resent acting and I moved back into teaching. I missed kids. I missed working um, in museums. I, I missed working with kids. And so I started to receive the smaller 
uh, gratitudes, you know? Not necessarily an applause, but just a smile from a kid was enough for me. Just a smile from a kid or a handshake of a parent. And eventually, if I'm away back here to York, I'm teaching, and then this happens. <laughs> Someone says, Brian, come out and do this story slam thing. You tell funny stories, you do this. Oh, it'll be so much fun, you'll love it. And now once a month, I get to come here and you people feed my addiction. So today, I would have, I'm gonna ask for a favor. I'm gonna ask as I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say thank you, I'm gonna wave goodbye. And I do not want you to feed my addiction. Thank you.